And welcome to the girls. I hope that you're getting all of your holiday list ready. It's yeah. the list time of the year, isn't it? I list know. and list and list. It seems like, you know, you start early or if you don't start early. I, I When I used to start early, I used to start on Black Friday and like buy things and then it seemed two weeks into buying, I was still buying more. So now I kind of wait and buy later. Does that make sense? Well, I spend you, less money. You keep, you keep adding to the list yeah, and adding to the, the list. I'll just get bigger. It's not that I'm, you know, saving money or getting stuff done ahead of time. It's I'm just buying more. Well, how about as your kids get older and they need maybe sneakers or they're going to buy something, whatever. It's everything you buy in November. You say to your kid, "That's for Christmas." Yeah, that, that's, that's one part of the your posts Christmas that we had. I was, it made me <laughs> it made me laugh because there was a meme out there and it's like, "Oh, I need toothpaste, mom," and it's November fifteenth. You're like, "That has to be part of your Christmas." <laughs> <laughs> At this point, everything in the, you know, from Santa's list is, is yeah. also on the mom Christmas list. Well, there's two reasons why. Sometimes you're running out of package to try to keep the piles evenly. Yeah. And for what mom's given and dad's given, whatever. But um, the, uh, the other thing is the budget. Yeah. So it's like, how much could you, could you really do? And then as kids get older, they need less. Well, they like, need less, yeah, but it's one like, big thing. <laughs> you, they have like two things, $5,000. You know, because they get older, their stuff gets smaller, gets more expensive. So it's, you know, the tablet and it's the phone and it's $5,000. And it's funny because <laughs> when I was a kid, it's like we got a Christmas gift right. from Santa Claus. Yeah. And, you know, you had to be good all year long and pick out that one thing. It wasn't that you got everything that you checked off in that Sears catalog. Well, the goal, so. the goal this year is to stick to a budget and, you know, my kids have been great. They, they really don't ask, but, you know. It's us as parents who say, you need to make your list. What do you want for Christmas? Because you want your kids to, you know, make their lists and, you know, they want Santa to come and you want them to well, feel happy. I think it's less stress on us if we have a guide of what they want. And then we're talking about lists. So you have the list for the Christmas gifts and you have the list for the Christmas family gifts. Mm -hmm. Then you have the grocery shop and, and what you're going to have for the holidays and make. Then you have the decorating list. So it's list, list, list. And we usually end up at the bottom of the list taking care of ourselves. Yeah, yeah, so right. So it's like you run yourself ragged. You're not eating right. You're not sleeping right. You're just like stressed. Merry to the Christmas! Yeah, it's hustle, like by hustle. Christmas Day, you're just, oh, your hair's falling out. <laughs> you're like a hot mess. Everyone else is happy, but the kids too. And you can relate if you have children. They don't want anything till like three days before Christmas. Then you're like on Amazon Prime trying to find, you know, that, gift, of the that year. gift. Oh, I really think I needed this for such and such sport or they they drive you nutto or no i didn't want the red one i wanted the purple one or whatever that, that's it would where be. Uh, yeah that's where i think the fruitcake soaked in the brandy and the eggnog like if you look most of the christmas recipes have alcohol and it's like uh, i think i'll put a little drop in here and then the rest for and me. then the cookies you like put some amaretto in there thank you very much <laughs> well how about the wine cookies and how about over at nanny's house oh my god pops, it was always the fruit all the mixed different kinds oh. of fruits with the wine. With the wine, I the loved Like it. a cup of wine in. And of course, the kids, they couldn't wait for dessert because they're going to have all the wine. And all the kids are really good. And who comes up with these freaking gingerbread houses that you want to pull your hair out? The kids are trying to make them for 15 out. You know what I'm oh, saying. Yeah. And they're the putting icing the icing, the fall, the, everything's falling apart. It's, it's so much fun. You ever notice they walk away from the table when I'm still And, and we're doing there it. doing yeah. it. Yeah. It's fun. It's but so funny. It's the holiday tradition. So stay with us. We come back. We have some great tips for you today. Tell them about our guests. Yeah, we're working out. We want to keep you fit throughout the holidays. We have Sarah Berta back with us. She is a personal trainer and she's a holistic lifestyle coach. Feel those rocks right there. She's rocking. And she's rocking. You know, training with weights is important for women as well. We won't bulk you up as that is a fallacy. Okay. Well, can't wait to see. Get your sneakers on, coming back and training. Hey guys, we're getting ready for the holiday season and we thought we would have a guest on the show to help you stay in shape throughout the holiday season. We're with Sarah Berta and she's a holistic lifestyle coach, but also a personal trainer and we welcome you back to the girls thank you for having me it's so great to have someone here that can 
get us started because a lot of people, I know sometimes you get away from exercising or routine, maybe you went to the gym or you went to aerobics or you had a group of friends that you used to exercise with mm. and then all of a sudden like their life changes, your life changes, you get out of the habit and so you're, oh, you're like, oh. Like, what's the alternative? How could I get started again? So someone like you can take some, maybe if you've been an inactive for about five years, where do you start? You don't want to be the weekend warrior and then be achy, achy, and then right. just never go back again. Yeah, so the first step is actually like hire a trainer. Like, that's the biggest piece of advice I can get because unless you go into something without like a plan, you're never gonna get the results that you actually want. So hiring somebody who knows what they're doing, it's like you wouldn't go get your hair done by somebody that's gonna go do your nails, right? Like, it just you just wouldn't. You would go to a nice hairdresser. So find somebody that's going to take your body into consideration and hire them. And it doesn't have to be long. Like, people think that they're gonna have to hire a trainer for like, years mm -hmm. when in reality like me I only want you six months maybe bad business marketing on my part but at that point you should be able to have the knowledge to do it on your own and I want you to see now I think that's yeah. good marketing on your <laughs> part because you're being honest right you have the clients needs first and they're telling their friends and family what you did for them and that brings you more clients right so it's actually a good business <laughs> move um, on your part to be honest with them and it, it's not about money 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 for you I've noticed uh, that you're genuine your posts are genuine when you post on the page that you have for your group that follows you. And it's, like you said, it's really that you genuine, genuinely care mm -hmm. and you offer advice because you want to help people. Yeah, because education is like my background. So I have a background in health and phys ed. So teaching is just ingrained into me, like into the depths of my soul. But like personal training is how I got my voice out there a little bit. But then I realize how much more to it. Like I'm only with you for 30 minutes to an hour, but what happens, you know, the six other days out of the week, I want you to be doing something else. So that's where really it takes a lot of scheduling and planning and having somebody that puts that in place for you if you don't know how to do it yourself. The part that I like is the word personal trainer mm -hmm. because no two bodies are alike and no two people have the same kind of energy nor do they have the same kind of likes or dislikes. If you're gonna do something every day or every other day, whatever the regimen is, and you don't like it, are you gonna stick to it? It's like, so no, how, you're do, not you, how do you zero in on what it is that you recommend for someone based, you know, based on their their age, is it, what are all the, the different things that go into that equation? Yeah, so with personal training, when I first get a client, um, we really just kind of have like a movement conversation. And by that, I mean like we're moving while talking. So I'm getting to know how they move, what is not working, what is working, what they enjoy or don't really like. But also I tell them what I feel that they need and then they tell me what they think they need. Right, so it's a two-way conversation. Um, from there, we come up with some things that they like, some things that I know that they need, and then kind of mesh them in, in the middle. Yeah, and you talk, yeah. the talk, walk the walk, because you also have your own uh, health coach and you also mm -hmm. have your own trainer. Yeah, correct? I do, yeah. So you work with people too. So mm -hmm. everyone needs that group of people that could bounce ideas off of each other, help them out when you're like, you know, training, like, weight lifting versus cardio mm -hmm. people will say well focus on that cardio because girls you don't want to get fat and you don't want to <laughs> bulk up bulk up bulk up i hear this all the time and you hear that it's a misconception but how is it a misconception and why is weight training so important for women especially right so that's usually the first thing that i get is they're like i don't want to start weight training because i don't want to get big and bulky or I don't want to train like my chest or because why do I want my chest to get bigger? But what people don't realize is we don't train body parts, we train movement, right? Movement's important in your everyday life. So I want my clients to understand that I'm not trying to sculpt or build you unless that's your goal, right? That's a whole different story. But most of my clients, I just want them to be healthy and strong. So real life application is what we do next, right? So when somebody's like, oh, well, I heard my doctor told me that picking things up off the floor is bad for my back. I'm like, well, do you do your laundry? Do you bend over? Or they're like, I can't squat. Hmm, how do you get to the toilet? You know, like those are the things, <laughs> oh it's like real life application. Mm -hmm. People are like, oh, why do I have to overhead press things? Well, you're putting things into a cabinet, right? 
things that are important you have to be resilient at or you're just gonna break and fall apart and that's where things happen so we want to build that muscle because if you don't have muscle around your joint then your joints are just pulling on themselves so you need to build that muscle to build stability so is there actually is it impossible for a woman to actually gain mass or is it that they feel they're gaining mass because like some people say well I'm using weights but now my my jeans feel tight in my legs. Mm -hmm. Why is that? So to actually build mass, you have to be specific, very specific about it. You have to eat more and you got to train with the intentions of building muscle. Okay. Now, females who say that, it's usually inflammation, right? So when you lift, you create micro tears in your muscles and that causes a little bit of inflammation, which is like a little bit of water weight, which is usually why the scale bounces up a tad. And then that comes down a little bit as your muscles heal and repair. And how long does that take for the muscle to repair? Usually about two days, like they'll call it like delayed onset muscle soreness. So about two, two-ish days that is going to come back down. But then you have to think about what your personal goals are too. Like I wouldn't do what I do with my 20-year-olds, what I do with my 65-year-old. Mm -hmm. Very, very different. So um, intensity, duration, and time are also into consideration. Well, you brought up age. So mm -hmm. is there an age at which you should not exercise? No, because <laughs> think about it, is there an age that you shouldn't move, right. right? So you should be moving all the time and the more movement we can get in, the better. And that's why like, even if you're not exercising in a gym, 10,000 steps a day, right? That's what the goal is. And we're not meant to be potatoes, so we shouldn't be sitting all day long. So get up, move, track your steps. There's calculators on the app that you can find and just your phone's with you all the time. Just track your steps, 10,000 a day. You'll see a big improvement. Mm -hmm. Now, do you find that some people who've maybe not exercised in a while, they're more like couch potatoes, can they ever get back to that peak performance or is it just a certain spot they're gonna get to and that's it? Um, that depends on their previous training history and also the age that they're at currently, right? So I have an 85 year old client that I train. Do I think that she's gonna reach her optimal at 85? We can get her there, but the work has to be done on the outside too. So that's harder when you don't have me with her 24 seven, you know, so. Mm -hmm. And another question is, does it matter if you have maybe an autoimmune uh, disease or something that could injure or affect your nervous system? Like, should you be lifting? Yeah, so even if you have something like fibromyalgia or arthritis, like a lot of clients have, the more movement you have, the better it is because all the movement you get into the, your body, more blood flow. More blood flow is better for your cell growth and that helps repair all the things that are going on. So when people get arthritis, they get stuck, right? Their hands get stuck, their legs get stuck. You want that moving. You want new blood flowing through that all the time. So the more we can get movement in, the better off it is. It's like the Tin Man. He needed the oil. That's right. So we have weight to training keep is moving. like a facelift and for your body. Be moving. <laughs> it's important to have a, a trainer because if you're doing it wrong, you could actually hurt yourself, and mm -hmm. that's where the pain comes in the next day or an injury comes in the next day. Yeah. We're going to the gym here at the Residence Inn by Marriott and we are gonna go into the gym and we are gonna show you how to move it, move it properly on this special show. The girls will be right back. Welcome back to the girls and as promised, we are going to show you how to get fit with the personal trainer we have Sarah here with us and she is a personal trainer. She's going to give us tips. First thing I'd like to ask you is where do you start? If I were to call you now and say, okay, I wanna get fit, I wanna get on, rolling on the right track, how, where do we start with me? Right, so my first question to you is gonna be, well, what's your goal, right? What goal do you have? What do you wanna accomplish with me as your trainer? Okay, well, as I'm getting older, I would like to keep doing the things that I like to do and enjoy living and with life. I don't want anything to keep me from being active. I don't want to stop enjoying life. I want to live life to the fullest. Keep going and being able to do what I like. Yeah, that's good. So a lot of people do come to me with like their first initial goal is like, I want to lose weight or I want to tone up this and I get this whole like bat wing thing that people do. And I'm like, okay, well we can work on that. But let's start with what do you really want out of life? And your answer was actually perfect because you want movement. You right. want to move for the rest of your the, life. Yeah. 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 So when I start working with clients, the first thing that I really do is I want to assess you as an individual, right? Because okay. what you do is what different than you're going to do. So both of you are going to have different goals, right? Mm -hmm. um, so 
talking about goals, your goal is movement, where your goal now is going to be maybe well, the weights. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I would like to start doing some weightlifting, you know, now that I'm getting back into, you know, I had surgery at the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. and I had, you know, we talked about on the show, I had a hysterectomy, and that put me down for a little bit, and now I'm ready to, you know, get back into running, get back into lifting properly. I think nine times out of 10 people quit doing things because they're not seeing results. Results meaning things they, they can still do or results meaning they're not losing weight or they're not seeing body composition changing. Right, and I think that's one thing I really wanna to touch on is okay. weight loss on a scale may mean absolutely nothing when it comes to weight training yeah. in the gym. You gain so much more when you start lifting than you actually do physically, like losing pounds on a scale. Mm -hmm. um, your body composition shrinks as you lift. Mm -hmm. So the more muscle you have, the smaller you look. But the thing is, is after that, like the scale may never change, mm -hmm. right? So, so throw away the scale. And when yeah. we say throw away the scale, because there is controversy over this, it doesn't mean eat what you want and don't work out. It means throw away the scale and continue on your path to living a healthy lifestyle. Don't let that guide your life. And I think if I remember correctly learning, muscle weighs more than fat. So if you want to get rid of the fat part, I mean, so your body weighs what your body weighs, but and jet weigh the same. They do, but they take up different, different space. space. Yeah. Right. So if you look at five pounds of muscle versus five pounds of fat, when people tell me they lose one pound and they're like, oh, it's just one pound. Like, do you know how much one pound is on your body? A pound of butter. Yeah. So it's a lot. So you have to take that in consideration. So you get smaller, but you may weigh the same. And that's where most females fall into this like mental cycle of they're like, well, the number's not changing. So I should probably just do cardio. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, mm, well, the weight training is going to work. Just stick with it. Cardio is great. You need some cardio in your life, but weight training really shapes your body and gives you that like confidence. I've never seen any females more confident than when they're in the weight room, picking up a bar from the floor that they never thought that they can do. And then like applying that to life. Well, hopefully in a year we'll be here doing that. Yeah. yeah. Well, does it muscle up. also burn more calories? It does. It burns a little bit more calories at rest. Like the more muscle you have, the more metabolically adapted you're going to be so you do want to have as much muscle on your body as you can have and you could do more yeah if you have muscles you could walk further you could you know do everything so what, what are what are some things that you offer as a personal trainer i come in i don't know where to start you want to i look at this and i see a blank screen because it's like where do i start it's intimidating to some people i would think it's intimidating because i don't do it right so if there's one thing that I can say is, aside from getting a personal trainer yourself, like hiring a personal trainer, there's four foundational movements that you wanna be thinking about. Okay. And that's like squatting, which you do squat every single day. Think about sitting to a toilet. Um, deadlifting, which is picking something up off the floor, pushing something over your head, which is a push press motion. And then you do have benching, which is a chest press motion. And yes, we do wanna train our chest because that's just as important. It's an accessory move for your shoulders. Okay. So anybody can do all these motions and we do them in life we just don't realize that we're doing them in life well we're going to let you demonstrate because we're not exactly dressed for Perfect. lifting maybe yeah. we want to demonstrate some things but there are also other times of the day that we can be exercising and you'll go into some of those isometric exercises as well yeah so, so the biggest thing that i want to teach people is a squat right so i, I when i ask somebody to squat which most people you'll get one of these like knees ducking in, chest is hitting the floor, and then all of a sudden they're like, okay, that's a squat. Mm -hmm. Squatting, you want your feet shoulder width apart, and then you wanna be pushing your butt back and behind and sitting into that nice deep parallel position, mm -hmm. and then standing up with a nice upright chest. So if that's one place I start, I start there, because that's the most important. Getting up and down off the toilet is probably an important thing that you need I in your life. I think everyone does that every day. <laughs> Yeah, so that's the first place I always start. Now you said about like isometric stuff and you don't have to be in a gym in order to like work out. All you really need to do is like think about if you're standing in a grocery store line, right? All you need, pull your shoulders back, tighten your core, suck your stomach into your spine of your body and you just increased how much taller and more confident you look. Hey, but I'm 5'5 five five now. That's right. <laughs> but you're squeezing your abs, so those intradominal muscles that you have. Um, same thing, you're sitting in your car and people think this is funny. When you drive and you stop at a stoplight, squeeze your butt cheeks together. It's all right, so you're isometrically holding something, but a lot of people sit all day long. Like, we don't have the luxury anymore of like walking to like work 
because we have to drive like what 30 minutes sometimes to work and everything. People are commuting further and further. And then you're sitting all day long. So you're sitting in the car, sitting at work, sitting in the car, and then you go home and you sit in front of the TV. Right. So the thing is, is we want to be moving as much as possible and getting that blood flowing. So um, some tips for people at work, like standing calf raises, like just what you're doing. Like you just kind of like- I do that all the time because I'm short. So standing calf raises are great. Another thing is set your timer on your phone for like every hour, get up and walk like 250 steps, which is not far. It's probably around the cubicle. Walk to the bathroom, get some water. So like we talked about hydration is important too. And people don't drink enough water to begin with. So if you pair those two together, you're setting yourself up for a ton of success without even trying. And this is all free stuff. People yeah. sometimes say they can't afford it. And these are some things you can do for free. Um, but I don't know if you can put a price on your health. Uh, if yeah. you're looking at what to cut, what not to cut, maybe cut something else so that you can, you know, do this. Or if you're on a fixed budget, kind of trim it down and right. be consistent with those moves that you're showing that are free to and do. You can also work with a trainer for a short amount of time. You mm -hmm. do not have to work with somebody that's like years and years and years. So right. choose your budget and be very honest with your trainer up front that this is what you want to happen mm -hmm. and these are the goals that you're looking for and then just let that trainer deliver that to you and then if you have more questions hopefully your trainer will be able to well, not you know, only give that, you all that you know you you are actually investing in yourself yeah so if you're making yourself better you're less likely to be sick i think when you have yeah. a healthy mind doesn't exercise stimulate the serotonin in your body absolutely so if you're feeling better you'll miss less work and maybe you won't spend as much on doctors Right, you won't be sick. It in. Yeah, right. You, you're not as sick. Your immune system is a lot better. You do get those happy endorphins, you know, running through your body, and then you're changing your body composition. But sometimes, what you're gaining out of it is like confidence, and that's the biggest thing that I can give people is like confidence in the gym. Yeah, okay. and I always associate it with little kids. If I may interject <laughs> one thing too, you see how kids play? Yeah, we don't play. No. So this should no. be like playtime. Don't look yeah. at going to the gym that gets torture. This should be no, playtime. You know, real social. And play again, time. we're like we're in a hotel the residence in and they have a gym here uh, so there's always somewhere for you to work out whether it be at home or mm -hmm. at the gym or in a hotel or just getting your own things your own items what are some things that people can have at home and get like a full workout yeah obviously. absolutely so the the minimalist thing first of all is your body mm -hmm. right your body can do a whole lot of things okay. so that's number one a set of dumbbells is great, but you're always going to outgrow. Mm. You outgrow weight very, very quickly when you train, so you want something that's adjustable that you can get like, um, I have power blocks at home that go from five to 50 okay. pounds, so and it, they're stackables. Um, and then I always do odd object training. So that's like a sandbag, kettlebells, barbells, like those things, if you can afford them and know what you're doing with them, those are good things to add in. Wow. But like you said, like you don't need anything fancy, mm -hmm. right? All you need is really like 10 minutes of hard work, put your mind to it, shut out life and go. Go to the people who know what they're doing, just like if you were going to start a TV station, you know, you wouldn't go to someone who go has to a, a pro. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, I guess a, a music place, you would go to someone who has a TV station and get that information. So you go to the person who is qualified in that area of expertise Sarah, thank you for making the trip. Yeah, um, absolutely. It was, it's really been fun. I know we took a lot of your time, but hopefully we uh, added some value to our viewers and our online viewers as well. Yeah, I can't wait to get a set of weights. That's I have right. some dumbbells around me, but I actually <laughs> you know what to get it for Christmas, kids. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you again for joining us. And again, enjoy your holiday season with your family and friends, but keep it healthy and happy. We'll see you next time.